Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, we're going to show you how I'm going to pour a stamped concrete patio right over an old existing concrete slab. So this customer had had this old slab that they've had down here for years. They've actually poured in a couple different pieces. It was structurally sound, but it just didn't look good as you can see. And it, it, there also was quite a big step down from the garage down onto this patio. So um, they wanted that fixed too, so it wasn't quite as big a step. So the day before I came and I pressure washed this thing and cleaned it, got it all good and clean. And what I'm doing now is we're going to pour about four inches thick in the back and about two inches in the front. So I'm going to bond the new concrete to the old concrete because some of it's only going to be two inches thick. So I'm using this product called Weldcrete. And what this will do is when I pour the new concrete over this old slab, Weldcrete will bond the two together for me. So how we, how we install this is just with a brush and we brush it onto the old concrete and make sure we get a good coating on there and then we let it dry. And um, then as soon as you pour the new concrete over it, it, it uh, reactivates it and they, the two concretes will bond together. So it's a real good product. We use it a lot and uh, I highly recommend it. I'll have a link for it down in the description. So like I, like I was saying before, this was a, a pretty old piece of concrete. It's over 20 years old. It looks really bad, but it was structurally sound. It wasn't really cracking up too bad. It was done in a few pieces and it wasn't heaving at all. So I felt pretty comfortable pouring new concrete right over it. And we're going to re-landscape after this too. So, you know, that where it's going to be a little bit higher than the, the grass, we'll just re-landscape that. So there won't be any type of trip edge there at all. But it will really help this customer get back into their garage. And you can see how deep that step was going into the garage. It was probably 10, 11 inches. So we're going to get it back close to a 7 inch step where it should be. So I got all the bonding agent down and this stuff dries pretty quick. You know, on, on a good day like today, it'll probably dry in 30 minutes or so. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting these, these chairs down for the wire mesh to keep the wire mesh up off the concrete in the back where it's going to be four inches thick. This new slab will pitch away from the house. That was another problem with the old slab. It kind of slightly slope towards the house so there was constantly you know a puddle there when it rained so in the back there where now it's going to be four inches thick and it's going to pitch down to about two inches i'm putting those chairs to keep the wire up in the middle and then in the front where i didn't put the chairs where it's only two inches thick i'll just pull the wire up a little bit in that area now what i'm doing with that white roll that's we call that iso strip so that's an isolation strip piece of foam and I'm going to put that up against that old foundation. You can see how rough that old foundation is. That needs some patching done too and we may come back and patch that it, it pre, you know, later on. I'll make a video of that if I do that. But that ISO strip is going to keep this new concrete from bonding to that old foundation. We want to keep this separate and there's less of a chance it'll crack if we keep it separate and don't let it bond to that old foundation keep it isolated so that's why they call it iso strip it's about a half inch thick piece of foam and I sprayed on some glue on the foundation and it sticks right to that glue that 3m glue I'll have a link for that down in the description too we use that for bonding iso strip for bonding styrofoam to foundations it works really good now what I'm doing is I'm getting my tools out I'm gonna need a, a come along a bow float you know a straight edge and that shoot there we're going to shoot the concrete right from the truck right through the garage out the back door and then i'm just going to pull it around using the rake that was a lot since i'm by myself today that made it a lot easier than wheelbarrowing it around the garage i got a good truck driver there today too he's helping me out a lot so what i'm doing i'm snapping my chalk line for my grade and you know when everything's all done i'll come back and i'll trim that top piece of white iso strip off so i'm pouring a, my 4000 psi 3 8 mix stone and i that's this is the mix i use for stamping concrete 
4,000, 3 eighths. It's also got fiber mesh in it, a microfiber. So we got the wire mesh and the fiber mesh in this concrete. Two types of concrete reinforcement. I've had really good luck with this mix. It's a good stamping mix. And uh, I really like it. So this is what I use. So I'm just spreading it out with the rake. Getting it up to my level. You can see that chalk line I got there. I'm getting it up to the chalk line. Pulling all this stuff around. This was about this was about a, a 12 by 9 patio that we're doing here. So it took... I ordered a yard and a half. I figured right about a yard exactly with the thickness. So I got a yard and a half of concrete. I put the color in at the concrete plant. I gave the color to the to the dispatcher at the concrete plant and he put it in there. So it's got like a dark, dark gray color in the concrete. I'll have the link for where you guys can get the color, you know, and the stamps that I'm going to use. And all that stuff down in the description, guys. So if you know if you want any of this stuff or if you want to check it out, you can just click on those links to go check it out. So I'm getting most of the concrete all spread out. I'll, I'll leave a little bit of hole because I don't want too much extra left over to, to dig out of here and have to deal with after. But I like getting it mostly spread out first. And then I'm going to get my edges all magged and then I'll screed this down. You can see the truck driver there is helping me out a little bit. He's shoveling the chute down. Because we'll have to get rid of that chute once I get enough. And he'll he'll drag it out front and wash it up for me. That's a 16 foot coal chute. We use that quite a bit too on most of our jobs. So I'm mag floating my edges to my chalk line. And that's going to be you know the grade that I screed off from. So I'm going to be wet screeding this. The, in the front, the board, I set the board right to grade in the front. But that sideboard there, some of it's to grade. The back isn't. So I had to snap a line on that. But I'll mag the concrete right to the top of the board in the front. And then I'll use that to screed from. You can see mag floating when you just, you know, for you guys that don't do it a lot. If you just move it, keep moving it back and forth slightly. Tip it up the way you're going. Tip it back up when you go the opposite way. It really brings up the cream. It pushes down the rocks. And that's what you're looking for in an edge when you go to screed concrete. So I'm just fine tuning things, making sure I'm not too high, not too low. And then I'll just screed the concrete, level it out. Remember the concrete slopes towards the front, you know, away from the house, a couple inches. So they won't have any more water problems here. And they'll end up building a little landing and some a set of stairs coming out of that door there to the left. So they'll they'll deal with that after the fact. We didn't go all the way up against the the part of that that patio or that sunroom whatever they call it there to the left we didn't go all the way up against it because I didn't want to run the new concrete out over the the dirt over there and have some of it on the old concrete and some of it on the dirt I wanted to make sure the sub base under this new concrete was all the same otherwise it's more likely to crack right there so that's why we didn't extend it out there a couple more feet they're, that's all going to be covered with wood anyway. There's going to be a wood platform over it. So that you won't even see that when they're all done. So I'll get this greeted out, you know, and then we'll get it bow floated. It takes a little bit of time when you're by yourself and you got to do everything. You know, I don't do too many pours by myself anymore. Usually I always have one of the guys with me. But we had to get this done. You know, it had been raining quite a bit, so we're trying to get as many jobs done per day as we can to get caught up. I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. How many how many of you guys down there out there listening pour concrete, you know, and the rain really messes you up? Let me know down there in the comments. I know it really messes us up. We have concrete scheduled for every single day, sometimes two jobs a day. So when it rains, 
that really messes up the schedule and it's hard to get things rescheduled after that so we uh you know we just do what we have to to get things done pour saturdays if we have to and pour two a day three a day if we have to that's just how it works with this business so i'm coming down the the stretch run now on this big thing and i'll get it i'll get it screeded off get rid of i got a little bit of excess concrete i had to deal with so I just shoveled that into a wheelbarrow and I got rid of that. But right now I just got to get it screeded out so I can get it bow floated. You can see I had a little bit left over there. <laughs> Too much, really. I shouldn't have. Uh, I shouldn't have shoveled so much down the chute, but I got rid of it. Now I'm just striking that edge off, and the, get this pour finished up, and get the tools washed. So the bull float, what the bull float does for you guys that don't know, is it pushes down the rocks, brings up some cream, some nice paste, and you know that's what we're going to be working on to stamp this. So whenever you're stamping, I like to make sure I bull float it really nice. Try not to leave any lines. I'm going to get, be getting back on it to mag float it, but the better you can do on bull floating, the easier the rest of the process will be. We like that bow float with the rounded edges right there. You can see they're kind of rounded. They don't really leave much of a line at all. So I'm going to mag my bow float marks out. Where I pick it up, you always leave some type of mark in the surface. So I'll get that magged out. All right, so it's probably about 45 minutes later. And what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm tapering this front edge a little bit to lessen how thick it is right there so when these people go to walk up on it when they go to re-landscape and match this edge the front edge will be tapered just a little bit they also drive their lawnmower up on this and they park their lawnmower in there to the right in that little shed area so it'll be a little easier to to drive the lawnmower up on there too with it tapered so i just dug out a little bit of that concrete and then I slightly sloped it down a little bit. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm mag floating the whole surface. So I'll get it mag floated using my big Darby there. I can pretty much reach everything from the outside. And once I get it mag floated, I'm going to get ready to stamp it here. You can see my stamps right down there to the right. So this is my release powder. I always throw this release powder on. This does a couple things for me. It keeps the stamps from sticking to the surface. And it also adds a secondary color to the concrete. Kind of an antiquing type of color. Now I'm using Ashler Slate stamps here. So I get my first, I get my first one down and then they all interconnect a certain way. They, they all have to go one way. And I have to keep them that way. Every time I pick one up and set it back down, you can see this stamp has a notch in that corner right there so every single one I put down has to be going the exact same way for them to connect right so I like to get all my stamps that I have laid out first I only brought five stamps to this job I got 11 of these but I didn't need all 11 so I get all five of them laid down there and then I, I'm rolling that edge. I always like rolling my edge with my texture roller. That way I know I have good texture right up against the edge because you can see that blue stamp up back there. It has to roll up the edge a little bit. So it's hard to get really good texture right up next to the edge with that. So the roller takes care of that. And then I just, I tamp the stamps in with my feet 
I don't need a tamper on this. The sunk concrete's not hard enough for a tamper, so I'm just using the weight of my body. Pick one stamp up and then reset it back down in front of a another stamp and then we just keep working our way to the other end. Now making sure I, you know, I, I cover the whole stamp with my feet and then when I pick it up, I also check what the texture looks like under the stamp when I pick it up. If I don't think it's got good enough texture, I'll just set it back down and retamp that area. So this is how you pour a, a stamp concrete patio over an existing old concrete, guys. I mean, you can do it. There's no reason to break out that old concrete um, if it's structurally sound. Now, if it's settled and heaving and are all cracked, then yes, I'd definitely recommend taking out the old one. But if it's still in good shape, it's not settling, uh, the frost hasn't heaved it bad, then there's no reason to take it out. You can pour right over it if you have the room to pour over it, which they did here. So, I mean, if you don't have the room, if it was butted right up against that door sill, then I wouldn't have been able to pour over it. I would have had to take it out. But this one, as you can see, we had plenty of height. It actually made the height a lot better on this. So this we can pour this new concrete right over the old concrete. And in a minute here, you'll see what this came out looking like. It came out looking really good. The homeowner was really happy. They were sick and tired of looking at that ugly concrete. So I'm just going to finish this up stamping. And then I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my uh, uh, tools that I use to touch up the groove marks. And I'll touch up some of the marks that need to be touched up. And then that's it. If You know, for you guys that haven't seen any of my other stamping videos, you can go watch some of my other stamping videos. I'll have them linked at the end of this video. So you can see how I, I wash. Now i got to come back and wash this, clean it, and then seal it. And I've done that in most of my other stamping videos. But this is what it came out like when it was done. You know, I had nice color to it. That's what it looked like before, really ugly. And now it's sealed up really nice. And this is how we do stamp concrete over existing concrete.